You could look at somebody from the outside and think they look healthy, but you don't see that inside their body is literally trying to destroy them. Starting round nine of chemo and I've been over 50 rounds of radiation, so that is crazy. It's the small victories that we're counting and I'm thankful for that. And hopefully I can have a few more good days. Biotin, collagen, and keratin are crucial vitamins that are shown to help with like hair, skin, and nail growth. I am so much more than these awful diseases. And instead, it's just another chapter to my story. There's been this strange obsession with this girl on TikTok for apparently faking a scar on her face, but today I think we found somebody who has her beat. It's bad enough when you fake something and lie to your audience to gain sympathy, or maybe even to gain attention online, but it's a whole other story when the thing that you're faking is a fatal illness. It goes even lower if you fake that illness to scam people out of their hard-earned money. Meet Maddie, a 19-year-old who has recently been arrested over this very Thing. A young woman battling both leukemia and pancreatic cancer. The cops say she wasn't sick at all. They say she was faking it to rake in thousands of dollars in donations. Police arrested 19-year-old Madison Russo Monday morning. She's suspected of stealing over $37,000 from more than 439 donors. So in one interview, Madison Russo claims doctors told her she had an 11% chance of survival. This warrant says medical professionals came forward to report the inaccuracies of Russo's medical equipment placement on her body in the pictures that she shared on social media. The warrant also states the pictures appear that she took them from inside her apartment and not a medical office. Maddie Russo allegedly claimed all the while that she had cancer. And tonight, News H Charles Hart reports how one social work expert says this type of fraud is growing. I just have different mixed emotions and, you know, with uh, my hair and stuff like that, that's obviously a big fear, obviously as a girl. I pray, pray, pray that cancer is something that you will never have to know. Before we get started on this video, I want you to do me a favor. If you're not sitting down, make sure you're sitting down. I want you to take a deep breath and just think of something that makes you happy and just hold on to that for the remainder of this video. And if you can't think of anything to focus on, just focus on Chester back here. You see him? Just look at him. We've discussed a lot of things on this channel. Some things are really serious, some things are really goofy, and some things make me want to learn how to self-lobotomize. There is a woman who has been arrested for for faking cancer online and collecting thousands upon thousands of dollars in donations for cancer treatments that she would never actually receive because she didn't have cancer. On February 10th of 2022, quite possibly the worst day of my life occurred. I got the call from my oncologist and they found a mass on my pancreas and I had stage two pancreatic cancer at just 19 years old. Scared is an understatement. I was terrified and I definitely still am, but I'm really glad I went to my yearly health check because it would have been so easy to just skip it and say I'm fine. So please take my experience and get regular lab work done because the sooner you catch anything that is wrong, the better chance of outcome and survival you would have. And it really could save your life like it did mine. So after finding out, I started treatment right away um, consisting of oral chemo and radiation. So far, I have completed eight rounds of chemo and over 50 rounds of radiation. And then at my three month scan, I was informed that the tumor on my pancreas was shrinking and it was responding to treatment. However, it also spread to my blood and is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Maddie is a 19-year-old TikToker who made several posts about having multiple forms of cancer, including stage 2 pancreatic cancer, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, and a football-sized tumor on her spine. Maddie claimed that she was given an 11% chance of survival. A GoFundMe was created with the title Maddie's Fight Against Cancer, and as of January 19th, 2023, this GoFundMe had made over $37,000. This is what the GoFundMe had 
had said before it was taken down. On February 10th, 2022, Maddie Russo found out she has pancreatic cancer and has been going to battle ever since to win this war. Maddie is currently undergoing vigorous chemotherapy and radiation treatments that make her very sick. But just like the Maddie we all know, she never gives up and is a fighter. As one can imagine, this diagnosis has been very hard on Maddie's family. Just like with any cancer diagnosis, the cost of medical bills, gas, meals, and expenses can be a burden. And that is something this family should not have to worry about. If you are able to, donations would be greatly appreciated to help cover medical expenses and to allow Maddie to focus on one thing only, which is to show that she is stronger than cancer and will beat this. Please donate and share if you can. There was also an update posted on this GoFundMe on January 9th, 2023. Overdue update, Maddie's cancer has been progressively getting worse and has spread all over her body, including throughout her blood and also on her spine. She has tried everything and given it her all. Chemo, radiation, and other methods have no longer helped. She has decided to start a clinical trial drug to see if this could be a miracle and put Maddie in remission. The process is unfortunately not short and will be years ahead, yet she is still smiling, even with feeding tubes and IV poles. Maddie thanks all of you for your continued support and prayers during this time, and she wants you to know how grateful she is for each and every one of you all. She says she wishes she could just go and give everybody a big Maddie hug and individually thank each person. Without this support, she would not be where she is today and couldn't have made it this far. Here's to the greatest comeback story ever and a miracle in 2023. If you look at me, you would never know that I am sick. I still have hair. I can put on makeup to hide the exhaustion and the pain. And I carry myself fairly well at work and school. I want you to know that invisible illness affects so many people across the globe. You could look at somebody from the outside and think they look healthy, but you don't see that inside their body is literally trying to destroy them. An article from the New York Post shared, Russo's story began to unravel on January 11th when anonymous witnesses claiming to be medical professionals reached out to authorities, saying they noticed many medical discrepancies in the teen's social media posts about her purported cancer battle. Essentially, people with medical knowledge were seeing her posts and noticed that something wasn't adding up. Photos of Maddie's alleged cancer port have gone viral on TikTok for looking improperly dressed, as well as this picture of a feeding tube being placed in her nose, but you could just barely see the end of the tube sticking out, which many have pointed out isn't supposed to look like that. In fact, two TikTok videos have gone viral discussing this. What is going on with that chest port? I am not a chemo nurse. Never done anything like this, but I want to see if it's actually true. Definitely not comfortable, uh, but I could see if you taped it, it, you could make it work. This is one of my son's old G-tubes. Well, not G-tubes, but food bags. You also have to shove this piece really far up there to get where she was, where she just had the slightest amount of purple showing. Here's our girl with her feeding tube that's not primed, looks like TPN. Let's go closer to her nose. Is that the end of the feeding tube? <laughs> When she was questioned about why she still had like a full head of hair and looked super healthy, she said this. Biotin, collagen, and keratin are crucial vitamins that are shown to help with like hair, skin, and nail growth. It's by the brand Well Labs. It's a beauty complex, but you can go to welllabs.com or I'm sure it's on Amazon. But I've been taking these. I've noticed a huge difference with my hair too. So that's been another really great product I think that's helping. And if that's not bad enough, she even had the audacity to trim her hair. You could see that these are trimmed dead ends and made it seem like it was her hair that fell out. Are you saying I'm stupid? No. Do I look stupid to you? Let's just think about the logic, shall we? Let's just think about it for a second. Police investigated the situation, and according to KWQC, multiple items were seized from Maddie's home, including a gray 2023 Kia Sportage car, a brown paper bag with medical supplies, bank records, an IV pole with a feeding pump filled with cotton balls, two boxes of transparent dressing, a wig, cash, and pills for nausea in the name of a relative. So it wasn't even Maddie's personal. Description. The article then goes on to share that Maddie's medical records have been subpoenaed and there were no records of her having 
any cancer. She is now being charged with theft, and this entire issue is considered a Class C felony. If she's found guilty after her hearing on March 2nd, she could face a sentence of up to 10 years in prison. As more people discuss this on TikTok, it was pointed out that the organizer of the GoFundMe was allegedly the person who bailed Maddie out the day that she was arrested. But as of right now, Maddie seems to be the only one under investigation, as far as I'm aware. It seems like we'll have to wait until March 2nd to hear any more information and see if anybody else is involved legally. It's days like these that are hard, and I try my best to stay positive and think that, you know, after my chemo is, uh, after my week of chemo is done, after, you know, round three is done, and I get, you know, a break until the next round of chemo, but sometimes it's, it's hard to, um, to think like that when you're in so much pain and discomfort and, uh, everything is just going the wrong way and we've talked about people faking illnesses before on this channel But this is a new low that I haven't seen before and the worst part about this is when researching for this situation I found out that somebody did this prior to this girl now this person faked their cancer years ago But this is still a serious situation and the unfortunate thing with this situation is I don't believe she was arrested Like Madison or Maddie was looking into this situation. I found a youtuber called Dantavius who made a really informative video on another influencer who faked having cancer between 2009 and 2015. Belle Gibson was from Australia and told the world a very sad story about how her mother had a disability, how her brother was autistic, and how she was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor and only had four months to live. All of which turned out to not be true, by the way, and even her family spoke out to discredit all of this information. But at a point, Bell had the world convinced that she was really suffering from cancer. Apparently, things like chemo and radiation didn't work on Bell, though, and she turned to something called Gerson therapy. According to the National Cancer Institute, Gerson therapy is a regimen with a specialized diet to detoxify the body from cancer and rebuild the immune system. The diet consists of using vitamins and supplements, eating pretty much nothing but healthy vegetables, and the use of enemas, coffee enemas to be exact. According According to Belle, this caused her cancer to subside. She lived past the expected four months she had, and in 2012, she began publicizing more information regarding her treatment. She grew in popularity on social media and eventually had her own app developed. She even landed a deal with Apple. She also ended up writing a book, and after raking in tons of money, she would constantly share about how she donates large portions of her earnings to charity. Skeptical journalists began to look into this and found out that apparently she had only donated 10 thousand out of the three hundred thousand dollars that she said she did. This led to people questioning if she even had cancer to begin with and eventually she had admitted to news outlets that she never had cancer but she also denied lying about it. She claimed that it was actually her doctor who had convinced her that she had cancer and she truly believed she had it but nobody not even the news outlets interviewing her were buying this story. In fact in one of the interviews some of Bell's medical records were shared and according to the records, Bell's neurologist said that her brain scans looked normal. Bell never seemed to have served jail time for lying to the public about her cancer, but she was found guilty of misleading and deceptive conduct in 2017 and she was fined after falsely claiming she was suffering from brain cancer to promote things like her whole pantry app. In 2021, it was reported that Bell's home was raided by authorities. Her assets were seized to repay the $500,000 in fines that she owed for the app that she produced being fraudulent. Since she convinced people that she cured her own cancer, it's easy to assume that many may have downloaded her app to try and cure their own cancer, and who knows how many people that could have hurt, or even worse, ended the lives of. I'm so tired, dude. I hate it here. For more information on this topic, I'll have the video made by Dantavius in the description below. But for now, let's get back into Maddie's situation, because there's a few things that make Maddie's scam worse than you thought. Not not only was Maddie lying to an online audience for donations, she was also lying straight to the faces of other cancer patients who she allegedly befriended. Early in my wife Anna's cancer diagnosis, she took to Instagram not to just connect with the outside world she couldn't see, but to share her story with a growing audience. When her account started to gain traction, we were horrified to discover fraudulent dummy accounts using Anna's pictures and content to build out fake profiles and solicit donations. There truly is 
no depth fraudsters won't sink to. Today, I opened my inbox to an unsolicited message from a prominent Cancer Network figure with a mention of one of my previous posts and a hyperlink to an article about the arrest of a young woman in Iowa. That woman, pictured below, is Maddie Russo. It is possible you've engaged with her content, especially if you're part of the cancer world. She was relatively prominent. As a young college student, AG tech intern, and cancer patient afflicted with leukemia, stage 2 pancreatic cancer, and a tumor on her spine. My wife connected with Maddie as she was afflicted with the same blood cancer as her, and we cheerleaded her, commiserated with her, amplified her message, and supported her GoFundMe. Well, it was all a lie. Maddie Russo does not have cancer. Hey, just a reminder, um, no one prepared you for what you were going to go through. There was no way you could have been prepared. And you still handled it with grace. And you still did the best that you could. And that is enough. Maddie's TikToks have also allegedly caused some cancer patients to feel horribly about themselves because they were so sick. Well, she seemed to be living her life to the fullest, having a full head of hair, looking healthy, and going out for exercise. But sometimes I just need to step back um, and you know, get reminders from friends and family like, Maddie, it's okay if you can't make it to the gym today. It's okay if you show up to the gym and you walk for 15 minutes and your body is like, nope, you can't do this and you go home. I've been keeping busy um, with doing golf, so I've been golfing and just when I feel good, just try and golf. And so there I was sitting on the couch, looking at that post and asking myself, what was I doing wrong? Why was I bald, weak, and couldn't even think about walking, let alone running? Walking to the car to get to the hospital was a challenge. I was thinking that I did something wrong or that maybe I was not strong enough. Maddie had even spoken at her university for having cancer. The police also reported that she spoke for pancreatic cancer awareness, but the foundation denies that she spoke for them. We can confirm the person in question has no contact with the National Pancreatic Cancer Foundation and has never spoken at any of our events, a spokesperson for the charity said, according to Fox News. There are pictures of her speaking at some sort of event, so maybe it was a similar organization or something of that nature, but she did claim to have spoken there. This weekend, I was honored to attend and speak on behalf of the National Pancreas Foundation at their gala hosted in Chicago, where I shared my personal story as well as awarded four Courage Awards to some inspiring individuals. I may not have been ready to tell people for a while an update on my journey, but I am finally comfortable to share. After being off treatment for a while due to the chemo damaging my liver, a football-sized tumor has been growing in my lower back and is wrapped around my spine. I have been trying to comprehend everything and look at all of my options. Hashtag Team Maddie, F Cancer, National Pancreas Foundation. The most awful part about this, however, is the fact that this now is going to affect other people who have cancer that might have their own GoFundMe's because this is going to create a new level of distrust with people, which really, really sucks because I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of people who have GoFundMe's like this are legitimate and do seriously need the help, especially in the United States when a lot of people struggle with healthcare. If you're considering donating to somebody who has a GoFundMe, who has cancer, there's a pretty high chance that they're being legitimate, especially now that we see that if you are faking it, you can get arrested for it. So there are consequences, there are things that will happen if you do fake it. So allow that to be a little bit of reassurance for you. And also I do believe anybody who did donate to this GoFundMe can get refunded. So yeah, I really don't want this to create a level of distrust that people have in others who are making GoFundMes to help their cancer treatments because that is something that a lot of people really need help with. I am still in disbelief, however, that a person could do something like this have the audacity to fake something like this I'm too sick from treatment where i i can't go anywhere i i can't do anything i can't get ready i just lay in my bed and puke you know and it's just extremely physically exhausting but also the mental part of it i think it's 10 times worse I don't think there are many people who don't know somebody who's either had cancer or passed away from it. There are even YouTubers who have either had cancer and beaten it or sadly lost their battle due to it. And either way, it's an extremely serious and devastating
devastating disease to have. For somebody to take so much sympathy to just fake all of it is disgusting. I'm trying my hardest to remain composed here because I come from a family who has, unfortunately, a lot of cancer-related issues. One of the most important people in my life had passed away due to cancer when I was younger. We've had some scares with other family members. This is something that's extremely serious and it makes me so much angrier as a person who has seen people who have suffered with this and have to deal with that not in your stomach wondering if they're gonna be okay or not. It's just really, really upsetting to see that somebody could take advantage of all of that and do something like this. Be a decent human being and just don't do this. There are so many ways you can make money online. Lying about having cancer should not be one of them. Maddie posted frequently on Facebook and TikTok, but she has seemingly erased nearly every trace of this incident online, aside from those who have quickly re-uploaded her posts. I wanna take a moment to mention two other channels who have discussed this situation, one being a creator called Drama Queens and the other being The Sesh Podcast with Kendall Ray and Janelle. I will leave both videos from both channels linked in the description of this video as well as the other video discussing the other woman who has faked cancer in Australia. There is also a TikTok account who has done a really good job at documenting a bunch of Maddie's posts after all of this had come out, which is a really helpful source of information to anybody who wants to look into this further. Thank you so much if you made it all the way to the end of this video, and thank you so much to everybody supporting me over on Patreon. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video.